on your right. Josh. But how? It doesn't matter. We're in the end game now. Hi everybody, I'm Josh. And I'm Brandon. <clears throat> and we're the Curbstone Savants. Today we're going to be talking about probably one of the biggest movie events. And we're about a week late, but wanted to give you some time to kind of, you know, settle in with all the spoilers and everything that's floating around the internet. But yeah. we're talking about Endgame. Yeah. First off, thank you for tuning in, giving us some support. But thank second you. off, this is a spoiler video. Yes. So if you generally don't care about spoilers, Cop or... into this video. Yeah. Yeah. If you do care about spoilers, we have a Marvel Cinematic Universe discussion mm -hmm. that is also touched uh, a little bit into Endgame on there as well, and that one is spoiler free. So pop on over there and then go watch the movie, come back over here and let us know what you think. Yeah. Um, but, so moving ahead, today we're going to be talking about, we're going to start off with uh, some of the characters of Endgame. Absolutely. freaking lootly So, um, first off, <sighs> Ant-Man. Ant-Man. Freaking Ant-Man. So integral to the plot of Endgame, and a lot of us knew it from the moment the first trailer came out, but I don't think we realized just how big of a part he was going to play. Yeah, um, he really brought everything together as far as the whole time spectrum. Uh, like, the part where he said, um, how long has it been, and then it says it's been five years, and he said, for me, it was only five hours. It's like, mm -hmm. whoa! It really put everything into perspective. Yeah, it that really way. put everything into perspective. And, you know, when they open up the movie in the way that they did on Clint's family disappearing and him going off to be, you know, go on a vengeance street because he doesn't know what happened. Yeah. And the Avengers going to th where Thanos' last lo no location was, ending him and not knowing what to do because everything's been done. Yeah. The Infinity Stones are gone. I yeah. mean, he really gave him a way to bring that all back. Yeah, and, and I have to say that that's a testament to the excellent writing of the Russo brothers because we we thought that it was just going to be, yeah, Thanos, figure it out. He's just going right up Thanos' booty hole. Yeah, and like, that's that's the movie. Right. You know, they're going to come together, they're going to figure it out, and, and, and I think they're going to come back together. But he freaking... Fat Thor kills Thanos within like the first 15, 20 minutes of the movie. And I promise you, anybody who's like, okay, yeah, I know where this is going, you're a goddamn lie. Nobody knew where that movie yeah. was going at all. No. And I absolutely love that aspect because nobody thought that Thanos was going to get killed that soon. And I mean, bringing in with the quantum realm and everything at that point, yeah. being able to allow them to try to, to even conceptualize time travel yeah. is really impressive. Um, I mean, they bring that time travel idea to even Professor Hulk. Right! Which we got Professor Hulk in this film. Oh my god, again, nobody so cool. saw that coming either. Freaking Professor Hulk, it was, it was so refreshing they to see. They animated him dabbing. Yeah. Oh my god. They, they did, but you know, it's Professor Hulk and he was so well done, you don't really care. No, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, but uh, you recently said um, you brought up Ronan. Yeah. And they, they never, I, I noticed that they never really called him by name. No, they never called him that. Uh, yeah. They unofficially called him that in promotional materials such as like toys and things. Right. Um, and then the Russo brothers confirmed that that is who he is playing. Um, but yeah, no, they, none of the other characters ever call him Ronan. Clint never calls himself Ronan. Um, they still refer to him as either Clint or Hawkeye. Yeah. And I think it's primarily Clint more than it is Hawkeye. So they, that's interesting. They did go kind of dark in this one. We saw a couple of throat slash. We saw some heads getting We cut had off. a katana fight. Yes. It was so good. downtown Tokyo yeah. against the Yakuza. It was amazing. <laughs> I love it. Um, it brought in the question of morals, which was great. And it showed us a different side of the world and the universe currently. Yeah. Um, you know, and you had brought up actually Fat Thor. Yeah, Freaking fat Thor. So he wasn't fat when he cut off Thanos' head. Right. But afterwards, it, it, knowing that he failed kind of gave him some PTSD there. I mean, oh, yeah. I mean... Can you relate? Yeah. It, it, <laughs> <laughs> I can relate. Let me it, tell you. It, it definitely brought... I, I dare say it definitely brought out the worst in Thor because, like, throughout the whole movie, he was just kind of out of it. 
Like it kind of emphasized how big of a baby he really was. Yeah, and and how he he really lost his sense of purpose because yep. he he had the chance to do it and it really messed with his head. Even even when he had to confront his girlfriend in the past, but he did kind of bring it together because. Again, I didn't think that he was going to bring Mjolnir into it, but when he's like white and then just got it, it was yep. like, whoa, that was freaking dope that he that got it. That was also back. a really, really deep cut uh, ED joke. Really? Huh. Sometimes it takes a minute. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Here, I so, get it now. Fight. <laughs> bringing it back, you know, one other major character point in this yeah. film. Uh, we talked about Hawkeye, is Black Widow. Yeah. Hawkeye's best friend, co-worker, colleague, you know. She dies. And, she dies. And she goes out in very interesting fashion. Exactly kind of how you expect her to go out. Yeah. Without, without somewhat of a fight. Yeah. You know, between her and Hawkeye trying to stop each other from fleeing themselves off the cliff of Vormir, uh... We, I really didn't know who was going to die at that right. point. You Again, know, such good writing. I thought for a second maybe they were going to pull the rug out from underneath us and they were going to be like, you need to sacrifice that which you love the most. And Hawkeye was just going to be like, I already lost what I love the most. They were going to be like, congratulations, Hawkeye. You discovered the infinity loophole. Yahoo! And both of them wound up living. Yep. Yeah, but it's like... And he, then we thought Hawkeye was going to die. Oh, yeah. And then he didn't die. And then... Black Widow pulls the, the wool over our eyes again, mm -hmm. and she she puts the rope on him, and yeah, it, it was it was beautiful in its own way because like they, they didn't have a romantic relationship, but, but that that, like, that bond, familial connection, yeah, they you know. really freaking loved each other. So that that whole scene was absolutely beautiful. It was really good, and although it ended in death, it, it was. It was, it was impactful. It really hit his mark. Similar to, actually, who we're going to be talking about next. So Thanos, wrought with death, wrought with misery, yet so impactful. Oh, yeah. Um, the whole way about how they went back into the past and they were trying to get back to the Infinity Stones, and, again, really good writing, because I'm sure a lot of people were, were going to wonder, wait, how is Thanos going to get involved with this? And having the memories from an alternate timeline be put yep. into Nebula's head so that Thanos can see all that. And I didn't expect for Nebula to be that big of a character in this movie, but she really turned out to be the, the, the kind keystone. Of the linchpin, yeah, yeah. yeah def thank you. Linchpin. The interesting thing about that, too, is she was a, a hugely important character in the original Infinity War story in Secret Wars in the comics. Yeah. And uh, she actually killed Thanos. And in a way, I mean, she kind of aided and abetted mm -hmm. in both of uh, yeah. both of his timely deaths. You know, we talked a little bit about his death in the beginning. Um, I mean, we really didn't expect that to even mm -hmm. work out that way. Uh, for a second, going into this movie, I kind of thought they were going to eventually team up with Thanos yeah. to, to have to take down an even bigger baddie who may have gotten the Infinity Stones. But that didn't make quite as much sense as uh, what they ended up doing. Yeah. So we had alternate timeline Thanos. Yeah. And Good way um, to go about it. it. Just going back a little bit, the, the whole way that they killed Thanos, you know, he's in his cabin, everything's good, he's cooking some grits. He's and just all having, sudden, having breakfast. <laughs> then all of a sudden you have freaking the Hulk Buster come from the ground and grab one arm and freaking chop his head off. Yep. But, um, but when he figured it out, and can I just say, this was a different Thanos. Like, he was at peace. He I had mean, done his work. Yeah, I mean, no, uh, no, no. Um, I mean the Thanos that, the alternate Thanos that was getting mm. all the stones together. This was a different Thanos. He was... Well, you watch yourself die, back yeah. you turn into someone different. Yeah, he was, he yeah. was even darker, you know? Yeah. He rained fire down on his own people because he was losing... Uh, he got, he got, so, old, past Thanos got his, his head chopped off. Alternate timeline Thanos got pissed, whipped <laughs> by a Captain Marvel, knocked her out, got his armor pulled off piece by piece by Scarlet Witch, causing him to rain nukes down on the battlefield. Yeah. I mean, the, the, that's a lot. This guy, this guy was freaking different, and... 
you could kind of tell because like okay in the um, Thanos in Infinity War he was he was kind of somber he was kind of you know this has to be done this has mm -hmm. to be done and up until the point Precise. where he, right and to, up until he killed Gamora this has to be done and he's so sad about this yep. this has to be done and in this Thanos he's like nah I'm not going out like that nope nope well, get I this because he realized he died yeah and he was like so even though I did my work like I still died at the end I don't want to die at this yeah. time so I'm out for blood from the start yeah just. <sighs> It was it was just really good to see that he was just so even even still because he was looking for the stones and stuff like it, immediately when he saw the video okay mm -hmm. I got a new plan yep. right let's figure this out like so so that I could save myself and ultimately ultimately his goal was okay yeah I saw how this wasn't going to change anything I'm going to wipe out the entire universe mm -hmm. and just have everything in my image. So that and Build it from the ground up, right? And then, um, and then, Iron Man says, "So you're going to build up an, an empire on on murder?" And he's like, "No one's going to know that." Yep. Because I'm I'm going to be the end all be all for all of this. Because you won't be around to tell him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No one will be around to tell your story. I mean, he probably the amazing thing is that he was able to come up with his plan on the spot. On the spot. So accurately like that. And I think he probably figured that the only way that they could get the jump on him yeah. is to catch him completely off guard. Yeah. So him, you know, stealing, getting Gamora to, or Nebula to steal old, you know, alternate timeline Gamora's uh, quantum realm device. Yeah. And then following them back in time was a genius move because that literally caught them completely off guard. Oh, yeah. Because everybody comes back from jumping to the past to get all the infinity stones they meet up and they're like having like a great time you know ant-man's looking off in the distance like we did it we did it and then boom explosion the yeah. whole entire avengers home is just absolutely decimated out of nowhere he should have freaking died from that explosion as much as i love Ant-Man, he turned he tiny freaking and got away die bro oh. Let him live. Oh yeah, absolutely. Like I'm glad they didn't, Man but but him. an explosion of that magnitude, bro. Like True. it knocked him back so freaking far. And I'm I'm glad that Ra um, Rocket Raccoon didn't die because um, yeah, he's you know he's holding. He's like ah, I can't freaking breathe. I'm like oh my god, no, not like this, bro. I thought they were gonna yeah. There was a lot that could have gone calmed down in that burning rubble. But talking about past Thanos, mm -hmm. you know, we kind of also got to talk about the brunt of this movie here, the end of, the end game of end game. That scene the when war. He, he's out of the ship and he's just sitting there waiting on those guys, man. Yep. They're like, sire, what are you going to do? Wait. Yeah, just, he's just sitting there picking his nails, chilling. And then you have Captain America, Thor, and Iron Man, and they come out to have a bit of a conversation, yep. which they knew wasn't going to be a conversation. They knew it was going to be an all-out fight. Can I just say, that was one thing that I was hoping they were going to take a page from Captain Marvel on. Yeah. I was hoping that in the middle of Thanos going, you know, giving his spiel, <laughs> Thor was just going to get pissed and just yeah. run at him. Yeah. And just start the fight immediately. I'm tired of villain monologues. Yeah. After knowing that your heroes can actually care about villain monologues too and be like I'm done with this there's no point to have this conversation let's just fight yeah um but I digress but the, I don't know that that whole scene leading up to the point where he put his helmet on and got his awesome double edged sword that the right, Thanos copter blades oh my god <laughs> the Thanos copter blades yeah that that whole thing was just Absolutely excellent, and it led up to one of the greatest action scenes from a movie of all yeah. time. Honestly. There was a lot of speculation, and I'm a little pissed off that I, of I saw a this. video um, where they asked on YouTube, is Captain America going to lift Thor's hammer? Is it's, he worthy? Because is we he worthy? saw a little bit of it in Age yeah. of Ultron, a little tiny bit. A little tiny bit. He moved it. Yeah. Interesting fan theory behind that. He was actually able to move the hammer. Um, he was just doing it out of respect to, to Thor to not pick it all the way up. That is one theory. But the theory that I like a little bit more is that he couldn't lift the hammer because he knew of Tony's parents' death and kept it away from them. 
the moment that came out and the moment he came clean about it, he was free of that and he became worthy. I dig it. Yeah. I like it. I like it. I like both of those theories. Oh yeah, both of them were really good. But I like that one more because I, I just heard that one now. Yeah. <laughs> it's better. Whatever. When when he actually lifted that hammer. Oh my god! Oh my and god! The it came out of nowhere. Theater. Too. It just happened. I got out of my seat and was like, "That's amazing." Yeah. That's what I came here for. I was so giddy. That was an amazing scene. And just what he did with and that, it. Yeah, that wasn't even just fan service. Right. He didn't just hold the thing. No, he went in and he started. The, oh, oh him my and God. Thor started teaming up with like tag team hits. They grabbed Thanos' head. You know, he would wrap, Thor would wrap the axe around his head and Thanos would start to like pull it off and then he'd come in and he'd knock his arm down and pin it down. So now he's got his, his neck and his head between Mjolnir and Stormbreaker. And they eventually accidentally trade and he's like, no, no, the Thor's like, no, 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 you get the small one. Yeah. Oh my god, just everything about that scene oh was absolutely amazing. Oh my god. But, but he even. Causes, he can control thunder with it. Right! He can. He bro, shoots thunder. He. He threw it up and then just knocks him down into the ground with it. And yeah. then we thought that he was going to freaking die because he started to get cut up. Yep. And um, his shield got destroyed. Destroyed, bro. That's how pissed Thanos was this entire fight. He destroyed he vibranium. Shards. Without the help of the po of, of the stones. Yeah. Oh, my God. That's that scene, the goosebumps that were emanating over my body. Talked about... Um, I'm sorry, talked about Captain Marvel getting hit and knocked out by Thanos. Oh, yeah. Like, she got hit with the Power Stone. With the Power Stone. Because of how scared she made Thanos. He had to get creative with the stones, pull one out, punch her in the face to knock her out. And mind you, yeah. mind you, if any normal person, even Captain America, I would venture to say, without the powers that he has, because Carol Danvers is powered by the, soul, yeah. uh, the Space Stone. Right. Any normal person would have been obliterated into a pink mist. Instantly. She only got knocked out unconscious. Yeah. Just, uh, amazing. But going going back, uh, we were talking about Captain America and his shield got wrecked. There was that scene after... Um, there was that scene after Thanos got off of him and it was Captain America by himself. Yep. And I, like, everybody's like, no idea if this is gonna, if they're gonna win again. If they're yeah. gonna lose, is this the end of the film? What's yeah. happening? The, Silence his, on the battlefield. His entire army is looking at one man. One man. Captain America. And He's, you just see him sigh almost in half defeat. Right, like, if I'm going, and he tightened the, his yep, shield. He, tightened, he was like, if I'm going his out, shield is I'm going out and fighting. He tightens the shield like, let's go. And you just hear, Cap to on your left. left. And portals Just open the portals, up, bro. and you got Black Panther. Oh you have every single, hu every si almost every single human, every single person who can fight, basically, who was dusted, walk out of these portals. And Just, now you've oh. got a, f you've got. They called Infinity War a war. Yeah. But this was a. War. This was a. This. This, this was is, a war. Oh my god. Like, it was huge. Just and just. Oh my god, and just seeing everybody, everybody got their moment to shine. All the ladies got like, their moment oh to shine. Oh my god, we got to see Drax stabbing one of Thanos' generals in the spine. Dude, We oh got to man. see the husband and wife of Iron Man yeah. and Pepper Potts back Rescue to back. Rescue and Iron Man the going face. back to back was great. Just amazing. The whole scene was absolutely Spider-Man came through trying to bring the gauntlet to where Ant-Man was in the center of the battlefield. Beep, 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 getting, beep, beep, Getting corralled beep, around. Beep, beep. By Carol Danvers and Valkyrie and all the all the ladies and and if you notice so if you notice we're not giving any personal input about this scene or anything like what we thought it was it was too perfect it was, it was too good too perfect can only look at this objectively for what it was because of the emotional buildup of yeah. eleven years worth of movies of. Tw uh, t 22, 22 movies, movies in one franchise to build up an enormous world. Now, I didn't grow up with comics, but I can only imagine that this is kind of how, yeah, you know, those epic crossovers. Yeah, in feel. people's imagination as they're looking through those pages. Yeah, and it was just, it was so good, and it all came down to just the most heartbreaking sacrifice. So we saw Hulk snap. 
Speaking of we Hulk. Saw Thanos snap. Speaking of Hulk, before we get there, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Here's how I feel about it. One of my only letdowns. Because in my mind, I knew that this was going to happen. Um, I knew that we were going to see that Hulk versus Thanos one on one. Or even if it was Hulk and Captain Marvel versus Thanos, because he's very powerful. Yeah. I thought that we were going to see that fight. And it did not happen. And I and I was very much so teased because when Professor Hulk was about to do the snap, he said, I have to be the one that does the snap. I did the research on these stones. They're comprised of most of gamma radiation anyway. Yeah. I thought that that was it's going like to was power him. him. I thought that he was going to turn into um, like no, gamma it's not Hulk. power. Well, like, I... Bro, I was because it's I made of gamma radiation. I, I thought I that was that. gonna like he was gonna take in that power, and I thought we were gonna be able to see that one on one on one. Were you as dis? And I'm not gonna say I was really disappointed because of the way that it played out. Were you disappointed in that? I'm gonna be honest. I didn't give it much thought. Okay. There was so much else going on, and yeah. thought, and I mean Hulk had so much extra to do as a main driver of getting things put in motion. Yeah. That. I was thinking on it now, I guess I'm a little disappointed that he wasn't in the final lineup with everybody, because he kind of wasn't. He was more taking care of, like, extra cannon fodder. Yeah. However, it doesn't bother me at all. Mm -hmm. It really doesn't bother me. Yeah. It doesn't bother me because I got something else to focus on. So much more to focus on. And that is Tony sacrificing his life. Yeah. Fulfilling the Christ pose on the Infinity War poster. Oh, come on, man. <coughs> he sacrificed himself to save the rest of the universe. Yeah. Something that initially, coming into who and Iron Man was in the first movie, he never would have done. But Until yeah. after he became Iron Man. Yeah. You know? And, um... And just how it came snaps. full circle when he it, said that line, I'm inevitable. I am Iron Man. I'm Iron I Man. love that that was the line yeah. that they decided to go out on. Yeah. Because exactly for that reason. Yeah. You bring it in with that with that line, bring it out with that line. Yeah. That was beautiful. So beautiful. It was beautiful. And then they even had a little effigy for him at his funeral that had his original arc reactor that said, Proof Tony Stark has a heart. Oh! Mm. Your father liked cheeseburgers too. Oh, I get you all the cheeseburgers. Just everything. Just just everything about that scene. I mean, everyone that mattered to him the most was there. You have Nick Fury who came in last, but he was there for him. And just yeah, he, the, the kid from Iron Man bad. Three, all grown up. All of them. Just everyone. The, all of them. Like just yeah. To those of you that were wondering who that random extra was on site because it wasn't Peter Parker, very clearly that was the kid from Iron Man. From Iron Man Three, yeah. Um, I know we purged that one from our memories, but... Anyway. Iron Man 3 was good. Iron Man 2 sucked. Don't talk to me. Um, I'll say it again. Iron Man 3 was pretty good. So, Iron Man 2 with sucked. that being said, <coughs> thank you guys for spending some time with us today. Thank you for watching this video if you did. Uh, don't forget to like, share, subscribe if you like us. Uh, give us a thumbs up. Give us a thumbs down if we did a bad job. Tell us what you think. Let's uh, let's have a real discussion. And uh, you know, as always, I'm Josh, and I'm Brandon. We're the Curbstone Savants, and we'll see you next time.